Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Jeff from Auto Trader, and I know we're all excited about that new Ford Maverick. I saw it in person. It is a cool looking return to the compact truck. Thankfully, there aren't a lot of trim choices, but I'm curious about which one I would buy. So let's take a walk together and see what's out there. We're gonna do this on my screen here in real time. Uh, you can see my messy garage behind me and uh, let's go so looking over here we have three trims it's funny this is backwards but whatever hopefully it doesn't mess you up or I could watch do this Whoop. and this okay does that make more sense maybe so we have three trims we have the XL the XLT and the Lariat. Now the XL starts at 19995. That's making all the headlines with destination and handling that bumps it up a little bit. But fascinating for that is the fact that it comes standard with a hybrid powertrain. That's pretty amazing for it to offer that. And we're talking 40 miles per gallon, 500 mile driving range. I think the steel wheels look pretty cool um, right here. I think those are sweet looking little wheels, uh, but you have manual seats and you're missing a few other things. You do get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is nice, however. So let's see what the difference is if we jump to the XLT. Now we're talking about alloy wheels. Uh, we have power side mirrors, uh, and then we have cruise control on XLT as well. But the Lariat is the one at the top of the hill that adds the LED lighting, uh, acoustic windshield treatment, power sliding rear windows. It adds some nice stuff, but the price jump here, I'm gonna go back and reset these things. So you can get hybrid on all of them as standard, or the two liter EcoBoost on all of them, which is cool that they offer the EcoBoost all the way down on the lowest trim. However, we're going right in the middle with an XLT, but I am jumping to the EcoBoost engine because I want the 250 horsepower and we'll get to it in a minute. I also want all wheel drive and you can only get all wheel drive optionally available on the EcoBoost. So let's start our build. So this is the 2022 Maverick XLT and the cab is what Ford calls its Super Crew. There's some cool colors. This Velocity Blue looks rather nice. Cyber Orange, which we've seen on the new Bronco. Um, looks, I, it looks okay here. I like that this bit is blacked out. Um, and then we've got Hot Pepper Red. There's a different Rapid Red if you jump to the Lariat first edition, but we're not dealing with that one right now. Um, and then, you know, white makes it look like a fleet truck. Black is, is a good choice. I like black cars, I mean, but... Um, it's hard to keep clean and all that good stuff. So my choice, Area 51, it's cool that they offer that. You know, I saw it on Bronco Sport and stuff. I really like this carbonized gray. So we're sticking with carbonized gray. And thankfully, carbonized gray doesn't cost any extra money. So like Cyber Orange is 495, Hot Pepper Red is 390. Carbonized gray, free. Not free, but you know what I mean. So this automatically comes with uh, Equipment Group 300A, which jumps it over XL to XLT. That, adds in the aluminum wheels, um, the power side mirrors, power tailgate lock, and cruise control. So now we come down to choose packages. And right off the bat, I gotta tell you, I am I wanna go with the 4K tow package. As it sits, the standard tow rating is 2,000 pounds. I'd like to be able to have the ability to tow 4,000 pounds if I want it. So I'm gonna add that, that adds 745. It also adds a different uh, trailer hitch. You jump from a four pin connector to a seven pin connector. More importantly though, we're talking uh, upgraded trans oil cooler, higher capacity radiator, radiator, upgraded cooling fan, and more. And this odd, you know, now, now you're moving on up. Now, I also want the F FX4 off-road package. Not everybody's gonna want this, but I like to go into the dirt a little bit, toss my mountain bike in the back, hit the trails and do all that stuff. I wanna pull up the details though, so you can see. Uh, it gets a different wheel than the standard wheel that comes on the XLT. Um, you get front tow hooks because off-road. You get the FX4 uh, decals. You get different driving modes though too. They add sand, mud, and ruts. You get skid plates, different suspension tuning. Again, a heavy duty radiator and heavy duty engine cooling fan, which I think is related to what comes in the uh, 4K package. Anyway, uh, skid plates, hill descent control, all that stuff. I'm adding it. Now here's where it says, this is a big price jump because you remove front wheel drive and now you have all wheel drive. Now, XLT Luxury Package, I'm gonna show you what's in here, but I don't really care about this. I do like that it adds the spray and bed liner, but we can add that optionally down the road. Um, LED lighting in the bed is nice, but I don't need heated wipers. I don't need heated seats, because I live in California. I know some of you would disagree with that, and that's fine. Um, and it would be nice to have a power driver adjustable seats, but again, 
I'm not doing this right now. So we scroll down. These are the uh, unique aluminum wheels that come with the FX4 package and they come with all-terrain tires. Uh, I just wanna see what happens here. Okay, so it's just a wider tire here, a different AT. When I get a vehicle, I'm gonna eventually do aftermarket wheels and tires anyway. So I'm just gonna stick with what's included because then down the road, we can throw on some you know, BFG KO2s or something to that effect. I like the way the splash guards look, 180 bucks, let's do it. This is a neat thing I wanted to show you guys though. So this is called, uh, Ford calls it their toolbox swing case. There's one for the driver's side or one for the passenger side. If you choose one, you can't choose the other because it swings out. So. It's kind of neat. It stows away in the bed. It has a little like beverage holder space on top and you can toss tools in there. I like this because I bring tools in my vehicles because I typically drive older cars. This is my 86 Jag. Outside is my 91 Montero. Inside those vehicles, each one has its own tool set. Each one has its own fire extinguisher. Each one has things, zip ties, um, jumper cables so that if stuff arises i can get home now this is a brand new vehicle you wouldn't necessarily need it but it would be nice to have some tools so i'm going to add this it's 280 bucks i'm picking the driver's side one i'm not going to go with the tonu cover because i'm going to keep it open but that's probably a bad idea now that i think about it because i added the toolbox i assume this toolbox is lockable uh, i would hope this toolbox is lockable or i've just made a grave mistake um, but this will be something interesting to find out and then we'll have to add a tonu cover down the road but i am leaving that off because the tonu covers add a good deal of money um, i do like the bed lighting system this is neat it adds more lights in the bed and i think that's really useful especially if you say you're camping or something like that so i'm adding that i want the spray in bed liner uh, I don't want the drop in. I don't want the bed tray liner. So $4.95 for the spray and bed liner. I wish they included that on XLT, um, but you have to pay more for it. Now, the rest of this, I'm not going to add perfect protective film and hood. Some of you will be like, you need that. And I'm going to I'm going to leave that off for now. Let's get down to interior. It's cloth. That's one of the reasons why I like XLT over Lariat. I don't like leather seats in my vehicles. No offense, Jaguar. Um, you know, fine Connolly leather. This I like the cloth seats in this vehicle very much, so we're sticking with those. I don't need the roadside kits. I, I would put together my own for my own vehicle. Here's where I go back and forth though. The power tilt slide moonroof. I don't like convertibles, but I do like occasional sunroofs, but it's $800 and it reduces headroom. There's already good headroom in the Mavericks, surprisingly good, especially in the rear seat. It's real, it's like scalloped right where your head sits. So I'm gonna leave that off because I don't wanna spend the 800 bucks. This is the part that bums me out though. You can only get the regular radio. Yes, it has Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, but it's the standard, standard six, six speaker system. If you jump to the Lariat, it's the same system. You have to jump all the way to the Lariat XLT to get the B&O system. And those systems aren't bad. I like, I've enjoyed them in the vehicles I've driven that have had them. So you cannot get that unless you spec the Maverick out all the way. So you can only get the regular sound system. So I'm gonna just live with that for now. And if I own this down the road, because I like good tune, I'm sure it sounds fine, but uh, a little bit more bump. Aftermarket speakers are pretty cheap these days. Just hit up a crutch field and go from there. So we've got the EcoBoost, which is great because now we're dealing with 250 horsepower, 277 pound-feet of torque. We've got the all-wheel drive on this one. We don't have a CVT anymore. We've got the eight-speed automatic gearbox. And where does that bring us? We've kept it under 30 grand. So that's really good. If I added the sunroof, we're over. If I added a few more things, we're over. I could take away the toolbox. I could take away a few other things. What do I have here? How many, what did I do in options? So I added four, 5,000 in options to bring us to 2970. So $5,000 in options, and we're still under 30 grand for a compact pickup truck that can now tow 4,000 pounds, has all wheel drive, has the eight speed gearbox. Um, it has that extra toolbox. It has extra lights in the bed. It has all-terrain tires. It has the FX4 package, which means it can, you know, handle regular trails fine. It's not a Tremor. It's not a Raptor. It's not any of that stuff, but it'll do what I need it to do. And that's how I would spec the 2022 Ford Maverick. Sound off below in the comments and let me know how you would spec the Maverick and if you remember the original 1970 Maverick. That'll be interesting to see who knows what and uh, we'll go from there. Um, and I think this was fun. I think we're gonna do this on more vehicles. So until then, I'll see you on the next one.